This morning, the first and only gubernatorial debate. All we need is action, and the only person standing in our way is the governor of the state of Texas. Did it change anything? We want to end school shootings, but we cannot do that by making false promises. We are 37 days away from the election, and Abbott leads O'Rourke by single digits. A record number of migrants crossing the border here from Mexico, but neither the federal nor the state government can stop it. So will anything change the situation? Something we will ask McAllen's mayor, Javier Villalobos. Rochelle Garza from Brownsville appears closer to victory than any other Democrat. Uh, the polling is showing that Ken Paxton is weak and we are closing in on him. But half of Texas voters do not know Garza, so does she really have a shot in November? And is the GOP really chipping away at the big blue wall in South Texas? Since when's the last time a Republican ran against you? Never. Never in 24 years? Never. We take you to Starr County this morning where a Republican woman hopes to make history along this part of the border. Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good Sunday morning to you from the Texas-Mexico border. We're at the McAllen Hidalgo International Bridge where a steady stream of cars, trucks, pedestrians, commerce, it flows back and forth daily. But as always on our program, let's start with the latest political headlines happening all across our state here. A Republican state senator said he's going to support changing the Texas abortion law. State Senator Robert Nichols from Jacksonville said he's now open to letting rape victims legally get an abortion. Right now, that is outlawed in Texas, and Nichols made that statement at the Texas Tribune Festival recently. An interesting twist to a story we mentioned a couple of weeks ago here on the program. A federal judge said Texas cannot ban adults under 21 from carrying handguns. In a surprise move, though, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is appealing that. His office did not say on what grounds they based the appeal, but the legal move has still upset some gun rights groups. And Governor Greg Abbott is spending vastly more on TV ads than Beto O'Rourke. The Dallas Morning News researched this one. Abbott has spent $7.6 million so far to date here. O'Rourke, $3.2 million. But get ready to see more O'Rourke ads in the remaining weeks. The DMN reports that O'Rourke has lots more ad time already reserved. We'll get to the big gubernatorial debate in just a moment, but let's begin with what appears to be the closest statewide race on your November ballot. It's the one for Texas Attorney General. We reached out to Ken Paxton, the incumbent Republican in the office right now, running for a third term. His office did not return any of our messages, but Paxton's Democratic challenger did call us back. Her name is Rochelle Garza. She is an immigration attorney from nearby here in the Valley in Brownsville. And we met her campaigning in Hunt County, a solid red area in North Texas. Rochelle, it's good to see you again. Thanks for uh, having us over here to your campaign stop in Hunt County. You're polling closest to your opponent than any other Democrat running for statewide office. But the, the poll showed that most people still really don't know you. What, what would you tell them are your two biggest issues? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Uh, the polling is showing that Ken Paxton is weak and we are closing in on him. We need to continue reaching those independent voters and letting them know about Ken Paxton's criminality. The fact that he's been under indictment for more than seven years without trial, uh, that he may lose his law license and he's under FBI investigation. I'm here to protect Texas families and to fight for our children's future. And that's what we need to tell people and let them know that we can have an attorney general that believes in transparency and accountability and will fight for them. Rochelle, abortion is a central message of your campaign. We're, we're in Hunt County. This is east of Dallas. This is a red county. I mean, it's, it's pretty much as red as you can get in the state. Why concentrate on these areas rather than getting the votes out in blue areas like Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, and Austin? It's important to talk to voters everywhere and let them know that this campaign is for everyone. It's not just about Democrat versus Republican. This is about the future of our state. Because right now we have someone in office who puts politics over people, who puts political grandstanding over everyday folks and families. And that's, that's what I'm here to combat. I'm here to, to talk to people wherever they are in the state and let them know that we have an attorney general that is only looking out for themselves and not for us. Well, you feel pretty confident you can get the vote out in those 
urban areas? I, I mean, the, the polling data is, is exciting because it's showing that we are trending closer towards unseating Ken Paxton. This is the closest statewide race for Democrats. And what's, um, what's driving that, though, do you think? I think that people are, are ready for change. You know, abortion is an issue that moves people. Over 70% of Texans agree that abortion should be available in some shape or form. They do not want to see women relegated to second-class citizenship status. And they don't want to see their daughters dying. So it moves people. With the fall of Roe and having this extreme view of, of um, res restricting abortion that we're seeing come out of Ken Paxton, you know, Texans don't want to put up with that anymore. Let's talk about a few more issues here, too. You're from Brownsville, the Rio Grande Valley, the, the southern tip of Texas. Yeah. Uh, the border also remains one of the most important issues for voters out there. How would you address the record number of migrants that are coming across the border? Look, I'm a, I'm a border native. I'm, a, I'm from Brownsville. I grew up in this bicultural, bilingual, binational community. Um, you know, I'm also, I also started off as an immigration attorney. I know the complexities of immigration law. I know that we can combat human trafficking and, and gun trafficking and also treat people humanely. These are things that, that are within our capabilities and that, that is what I will operate from. Marijuana, 37 states have legalized it, including some Republican states as well. Where are you on that? Cannabis should be legal in Texas. We need to make sure that we legalize it and capture those billions of dollars that will fund public schools and fund Medicaid expansion and all of the things that, that Texas families need. One person here in Hunt County at the event we just, we just uh, heard here asked you whether it's legal to bus migrants up north. Is it? It's a political stunt. What we're seeing come out of our, our state leadership it are, are political stunts just to maintain their own power instead of actually addressing the issues that people are facing. Rural hospitals are closing at really high rates. Half of this state is a maternity ward desert. We need to start taking care of families and making sure we're addressing the real needs of Texans instead of all of this political grandstanding that we're seeing. Rochelle Ken Paxton, as you know, still just a few points ahead of you. It's a virtual tie in, in the polling. Paxton has substantially more money than you do. Over the next seven weeks or so, are we going to see you show up on TV at all in, in ads? Or, or, or what, what will your campaign physically look like? Oh, absolutely. And we... we outraised him in the last fundraising period. Ken Paxton is the weakest incumbent in, in the state of Texas. He's the weakest attorney general incumbent in the country. Um, and, and, and it's because he, has, he hasn't seen a crime he doesn't want to commit. Yeah. And he, he, he cannot uh, build the support that he needs from the Republican Party. They've called him an embarrassment. And, and we're going to unseat him in November. If elected day one, what's your priority? My priority are the people of Texas making sure that we have accountability and transparency in that office instead of wasting our tax dollars on, on all of these political stunts. And, and you know, right now, Ken Paxton is, is, is defending his law license to the tune of $500,000. That ends with, with my administration. Rochelle, thank you very much. Thank you. This weekend, folks are still talking about what happened at Friday night's gubernatorial debate. Greg Abbott, Beto O'Rourke at UT Rio Grande Valley in Edinburgh nearby. Was that Beto O'Rourke's last big moment in front of a large audience? And does the debate change anything in the remaining 37 days? Our roundtable getting ready to discuss that in just a moment. Coming up first, though, on the program, Governor Abbott says he wants northern cities to see and feel the burden that undocumented immigrants bring. But how much of a burden is it really here in South Texas? One of our questions for the Republican mayor of McAllen in just a moment. And how much is the GOP chipping away at Democrats' lock on South Texas? We'll take you to Stark County this morning where a Republican woman there hopes to make history. And finally, a brand new episode of Yolitics already out this morning. If you missed the gubernatorial debate on Friday, this is the podcast to catch you up on it. We're talking about why South Texas matters so much to both campaigns. That episode out right now. Look for Yolitics wherever you get your podcasts. With the Kroger Plus card, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. You also earn fuel points on every purchase to save big at the pump. 
The Kroger Plus Card. All you do is win big, big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. In Texas, the future belongs to everyone. So we created the truck of the future for everyone. Ford F-150. With an available 12-inch touchscreen and interior work surface, it puts the world at your fingertips. Because the truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's for Texas. Ford F-150. Drive one today. Custom order your F-150 today and lock in 2.9% for 60 months plus 500 bonus cash. Ford is the best in Texas. Have a car? A title? You can get up to $10,000 with Title Max. Go to TitleMax.com and enter your car year, make, and model. See how much you could get. Check out TitleMax.com for the most cash you need. Check out TitleMax.com and shop us for rates. Check out TitleMax.com. All credit types accepted. Find out why so many people say, I got my title back with Title Max. I got my title back with Title Max. Get your title back with Title Max. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But one day, this farmer will use augmented reality to help ensure the best yield. Urban planners will model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. Exploring a spacecraft in a museum is one thing. But one day, the Metaverse will help students learn about the rings of Saturn. The Metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. Maite wanted to be a marine biologist. She wore green converse with the heart drawn on the right toe. Those shoes ended up being one way to identify her body in that classroom. I never want another family to go through this. Greg Abbott has done nothing to stop the next shooting. No laws passed. Nothing to keep kids safe in school. So I'm voting Beto for Maite. Hi, I'm Stryker, and this is my dad, Cameron, and we are Stryker Real Estate Investors, and we buy houses as is for cash. We're a locally family-owned business. We've been buying houses in DFW and surrounding areas for years. Does your house need repairs? Are you behind on payments? Or maybe you've inherited an unwanted house or even a tired landlord. Whatever the situation, Strycam Real Estate Investors will buy your house fast for cash. Call today and pay no fees or closing costs. Call 817-409-7779. Or find us on the web at fastcashfortexashouses.com. With the Kroger app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So start your cart today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome back to Inside Texas Politics here. We are in Hidalgo, Texas this morning at one of the international bridges where locals use it all the time to go shopping on both sides of the Rio Grande to see friends and family, etc. Busy time uh, here this weekend as well, too. But the problem is hundreds of thousands of migrants do not use this legal way in and out of each country here. They enter illegally, and as you've probably seen the headlines, Customs and Border Patrol says they've seen a record number of people entering the country illegally. Two million migrants so far this year. But how in the world is that happening with Border Patrol, with hundreds of state guards, state troopers here, game wardens here, a lot of law enforcement on the border? That's where we began with the Republican mayor of McAllen, Javier Villalobos. Mayor, good to see you. Thanks for having us here in McAllen. Uh, a record Surely. number of migrants crossing over the border. We just saw recent numbers. Border Patrol has extra agents down here. We've seen the state guard build up, state troopers, game wardens as well. Nothing is stopping this. W what do you think would? Uh, actually, I think what we need is some kind of, some kind of reform, uh, but it's not working. Whatever is going on right now, it's not working. We definitely know. What it has changed for us, it's kind of beneficial. A lot of the asylum seekers, the numbers have gone down drastically for us from last year, 1,500 a day to now maybe 100 plus. And that's what we deal with. What we don't deal with is the other immigrants that try to pass illegally. That's what the Border Patrol and everybody else is dealing with. And the numbers are incredible. Fortunately for us here in McAllen, we don't necessarily see that. I mean, that's, we're talking about maybe 15 miles away from here, so we don't see it. Fewer asylum seekers now? Correct. Are, are they just not coming or, or what? Or they may be going somewhere else because the issues we had about a year ago are not necessarily here anymore. And it has shifted. It has shifted from asylum seekers to now people just trying to come in without regard to anything, you know, illegally in a sense, but also kind of moving up north towards 
uh, Laredo, Eagle Pass, and the Del Rio area. They're getting more up there. Go Governor Abbott has said that all these extra migrants put a burden on Texas. Is McAllen spending more to, to, to handle them? I don't think we're necessarily spending more, but I think the, the rest of the country is. What happens is you have people that come through the Rio Grande Valley, but they don't, their intent is not to stay here. They go elsewhere. They usually want to go up where there's higher paying jobs, Houston, Dallas, New York, Chicago, DC. And that's exactly what happens here. So is it a burden? It is a burden in a sense for us logistically because we have to utilize some of our manpower to assist the federal government with those issues. But right now, we're fortunate that it's not too bad. Does McAllen have a line item in his budget where it, where it handles migration? We have absolutely zero for migration. We don't de deal with that. That's a federal issue. Most people might not realize that when Governor Abbott says that, that he's spending and, and the state is spending $2 billion a year to put uh, more state troopers, state guard, and game wardens here, this is tremendous for your economy. You know what? We've been doing great. We're blessed. And a lot of the times we see, we see, for example, the hotels, they're full. Uh, we see different things. Are, and then a lot of times we look into public safety. We were ranked the sixth safest city in the country. Second best as far as violent crimes in the state of Texas. I don't know if that has, if that attributes anything to how we're ranked, but we are a very good and safe place. Mayor, thank you for the time. Thank you so much. Texas Democrats and Republicans are paying particular attention to the Rio Grande Valley here, the southern tip of Texas during this election cycle in November here. You know, this has traditionally been a Democratic area, but Republicans see opportunity here. The question is, how realistic is that? Well, what's happening in one county just to our west, Star County, is indicative of the effort Republicans are making. It sits near the bottom of the state, and we spend some time in Star County to see what the political situation is like. Just across the river from Mexico, near the southern tip of Texas, Star County sits as one of the poorest in the state, as well as one of the most Democratic. And when's the last time a Republican ran against you? Never. Never in 24 years? Never. Eloy Vera is the county judge here, running for a seventh term and bragging about cutting the unemployment rate in more than half. Lately, we've heard a lot of talk about Republicans chipping away at the big blue wall in South Texas. Is that happening? <laughs> well, I go back to the, what I commented a little while ago. It did happen. It did happen. It happened in 2020. In, in the presidential election. You think that was one and done? I think it was just, yeah, it was just a freak. Two years ago, Donald Trump got 47% of the vote here, stunning this solid Democratic county. Then Maria Yvette Hernandez got her property tax bill. If elected, what, what, are, what are the two priorities that you have? I, I think that people are really concerned about property taxes and transparency and accountability. She is the first Republican that anyone can remember to run for county judge. Something so rare, local websites had to create explainers of how to vote in a two-party primary. I think we need to look at what we have as resources here. We're land rich. We may not be, you know, financially rich, but Star County is land rich and we are on one of our biggest, most natural resources. It's the river. I think we need to start being more creative and have a little bit more vision on how we can bring more, more money and really use those resources to our advantage. Here's why this race in South Texas matters to the rest of the state. If Republicans start winning here, if they start picking off these traditionally blue counties, that puts Democrats even farther away from winning any statewide office in the coming years. And that is the reason that Greg Abbott and Beto O'Rourke are holding their first and only debate here on Friday night. Can I drive around the county and see a rise in Republicanism anywhere? I don't think so. Honestly, I don't think so. You, think you know, if you look at their signs, none of them say Republican. They're running on the Republican ticket, but they don't want people to know that they're Republicans. When people say that this part of the state remains solid blue, is that the case? I don't think it will. What's happening in Star County, though, is a microcosm of what's happening statewide, with one side predicting victory and the other side predicting change. Our roundtable ready to discuss the gubernatorial debate in just a moment. Inside Texas Politics, back on the border when we come back. The power to change your future. 
is now. The SUVs are here. Be one of the first to drive a new Explorer, Bronco Sport, or Edge. Custom order your Ford SUV today and lock in 2.9% for 60 months, plus 500 bonus cash. See your best in Texas Ford dealer for more information. Three men, again. The governor, his top deputy, their lawyer, Abbott Patrick Paxton. Three men ignored years of warnings about the Texas power grid. Three men ignored warnings of a massive winter storm. Texas was unprepared. Hundreds died. Cancer patients unable to be treated. Homes and businesses destroyed. Billions of dollars lost. Paxton, as head of consumer protection in Texas, had one job. Instead, he fled the freeze for Utah. Abbott's response was to order the highest electrical rates in Texas history. Three men. Combined, they received millions of dollars from those who made huge profits. Now, every Texas homeowner and small business is paying shockingly higher energy bills, thanks to the three men. And the damn grid still isn't fixed. Paid for by It Could Have Been Worse, LLC. I'm Sean Blakely, Technical Director at AmericanEagle.com. Our clients have complex website and digital needs. Wernico Global Brands needed a new website platform to empower marketing and reduce technical complexity for 12 international brands, including Werner Ladder. We solve digital challenges like this all the time. We re-architected and integrated their back office systems, significantly reducing operational expenses. For complete website and digital solutions, come to AmericanEagle.com. At Thomas J. Henry, our results speak for themselves. Thomas J. Henry, the name you know, the firm you trust. Flu. It spreads easily. And there are lots of ways to catch it. <coughs> the flu is especially hard on older adults and small children. So keep your family protected because getting the flu is easy, but getting the shot is even easier. All right, time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. James Barragon, a political uh, politics reporter, rather, at the Texas Tribune, joins us for this segment this week. Bud Kennedy is here from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And, of course, Bernadine Steptoe, political producer at WFAA in Dallas, is here as well. This morning we're talking about the gubernatorial debate that happened on Friday night. There's a lot of issues discussed. Let's talk about one of them specifically, and that is school safety. Here's a comment that uh, Beto O'Rourke made. All we need is action, and the only person standing in our way is the governor of the state of Texas. In Florida, after the Parkland shootings, it was 23 days for that Republican governor to raise the age. And in those states where the age has been raised, mass shootings are down 80 percent. So yes, we can raise the age to 21. And as governor, I'll bring Republicans and Democrats around the table to do that. Uh, after all of these mass shootings, this governor has done nothing. And before we get to our, our panel here, I, I do want to play a comment from Governor Greg Abbott, too. He was specifically asked on Friday night about the could have been worse comment that he made that Democrats and other political action committees have been uh, taking and using in ads as well, too. I want to play you uh, this soundbite here, too, about what he said about law enforcement accountability. Take a listen. There does need to be accountability, not just for Pete Arredondo, uh, but also for local law enforcement. DPS officers are under investigation as we speak right now. There needs to be accountability for law enforcement at every level for not following the Columbine protocol. You, you will be sure to hold DPS troopers accountable. They, so, you, yes, as in, governor. in a word, yes. But second, there are at least seven who are under investigation as we speak right now, two of whom are on suspension as we speak right now. 
All right, James, you and I were at the debate in, uh, in Edinburgh on Friday night. Let's talk about this. A lot of issues discussed, and voters will consider a lot when they go to the polls. Inflation, abortion, the border, et cetera. How big of a deal do you think school safety is going to be when it comes to who they vote for? I think it's a pretty big deal. I mean, it tugs at the heartstrings of parents who got their kids back in school. And I think it really was one of the strongest issues for Beto O'Rourke because he used to sort of try to prosecute the case that, you know, there has been inaction on the part of Governor Abbott. And if, if, if the moderators are having to ask you about the accountability, I think it shows that there hasn't been too much accountability. And so I thought that was a strong point for, for Beto O'Rourke. Bud, what stood out to you in the, in the debate on Friday night? Well, Jason, I think the first soundbite you, you played is a good example. You have uh, Beto playing to emotional appeal, saying something needs to be done. You have Greg Abbott with a very uh, balanced, judicious, uh, the same kind of Greg Abbott approach we've seen. And so you logical, you kind of came away with the feeling whether the topic was uh, guns, uvality, abortion, you came away with the feeling that Greg Abbott has his strong, deep felt uh, principles and he stands on them whether you agree with them or not. So it really was an example of both of them. The second sound bite about the DPS, it's and, very and worse. If more, if more people had watched that debate, uh, you know, the question is, will the DPS cost Greg Abbott this election? And I think that it just shows that the DPS's failures are deep seated and he's not responding. Bernadine, thoughts on this one? I think that um, school safety is definitely the utmost interest in most of our voters. And also, I think that um, Beto did an excellent job of pointing out that the, uh, the governor has been governor for almost eight years and you still have these issues which are getting worse. And I think that uh, most of the voters are still going to wonder why there is no, credibility, no accountability uh, for the shootings in, in the city. Yeah. But let's run back through. We have about 45 seconds left here, too. I want to ask each of you in five to 10 seconds here. Does the debate on Friday night change anything? James, you're first. I don't think so. I think both candidates hit their points, but there was no mistake or gap that will cost either of them any votes. Bud? This was the this was the best debate from both candidates. This was Beto's best debate by far. He doesn't seem like skateboard Beto anymore. He's a grown up. This was Abbott's best debate, his toughest debate. He's ready to run for president. Bernadine. Jason, yes, Jason, I think the voters who, the likely voters who went in supporting uh, Abbott came out supporting right. Abbott, and those went in supporting Beto came out supporting Beto. Right. All right, Bernadine, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for Inside Texas Politics from Hidalgo, Texas. We'll see you again next week.